this quad has a Naze 32 Rev 5 in it. Yeah, from like three and a half, I think three and a half or four years ago, like a long time ago. And um, <laughs> let me go over the other details of the quad. So it's it's got LS2207, the RCX LS2207 motors, 2400 kV. I decided to put these red gem fan um, old nylon 5040 props on there because they fly really well to me. I figured at least I'll give the quad the best chance possible. I'm putting something ancient in the quad. Uh, what you see here on the back that's taped over, this is actually um, like a prototype antenna that I'm not supposed to show anybody. Uh, it also has an Ori 32 in there. It doesn't even have a 30 by 30 flight control. I'll go over the innards in a minute, but let's, let's just go to the flight video. Let's, let's, let's go to the flight video. So keep in mind, this is really old. This is really old tech and anybody that's been around during the era of the Naze 32 understands how incredibly poorly this stuff used to fly. And as I'm flying around, I'm, I'm literally dumbfounded. I'm just cruising around thinking, how on earth is this possible? This is an F1 board. How is it flying like this? How is it flying so damn well? I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't even, this has to be an incredible testament to how amazing firmware has become today. So to give you some information, the NAS32 board, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It has an F1 chip on there. And what that means is that you can't even run fast loop times or speed times. It only runs 1.33K for gyro rate and loop time. That's it, it doesn't do any more. And I know that the NAS, uh, sorry, the KISS, it, I think it only runs at 1K actually, which, it, I, now I see, <laughs> I guess loop time isn't really all that important. Loop time and gyro rate, it really is not all that important because this quad flies the same as any of my other quads, any of my very best quads. This quad flies exactly the same. It has the best performance, just like any of my other quad. It has the best, it has the best possible performance for a quad. I'm, I'm so... I'm so dumbfounded at how incredibly good the firmware has gotten. But hold on, let's talk about why I even considered building a quad with an Ace 32 in it. So I was talking. So a lot of people ask me how to improve quickly, like how to get better really quick. And I always think of ways to try and help people improve. But then I thought about what it was like when I was learning, and that I I. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I progressed pretty quickly early on for the level of technology that we had back then. What that means is that, like, if you crashed back then, you pretty much were rebuilding everything, and it was really hard to learn to fly because there were no simulators. You didn't have any aids, any help, or anything at all. You just had to keep crashing and building, crashing. So you, it really forces you to get better really, really quick. Additionally, the software and firmware, everything sucked. It was just so bad. The sticks felt like garbage. The quads flew like trash. You couldn't tune anything. Like, it was just such a mess. But somehow we learned. And I think those difficulties were, were maybe not so bad. Maybe there were things that, that allowed us to force ourselves to get better. So I was thinking maybe if I stuck a, a NAS32 in a, in a quad, it might, it might give me that same crappy performance from way back when, and it might help a new pilot push themselves to get better. Well, <laughs> before I ordered this Naze 32 for $5 shipped, brand new, uh, I, sh I could have probably just took an F4 board, any of my quads, and put them on a lower gyro rate or, or loop time rate and realized the same thing. So... <laughs> I, I mean, I was planning on comparing a Naze 32, and that was the other thing I was going to do, which is the reason why I actually bought the Naze 32. I was going to compare the Naze 32 to modern F4 boards and F7 boards and all these modern stuff, you know, the, the, the stuff from Helio and various other places that are supposed to be so amazing. And yeah, there's no point in doing that anymore because this quad flies probably as good, if not better, than my best other quad, or my best Helio quad. I'm, I'm just so shocked at how well this thing flies. All right, so those are the two reasons why I wanted to build a quad with an A32. One, to see if it would give arguably worse flight performance so that new pilots might build a cheap quad with a cheap flight controller and improve quicker, and to see if it's really a whole lot different than anything new that we have today. So now let's take the quad apart and I'll show you all the insides and talk about 
So on the inside, you see that I have a pretty darn compromised build. So underneath there is the Nays 30, uh, sorry, the uh, Ori 32. It's a 20 by 20 um, 4 in 1 because I just already had the quad built with a 20 by 20 4 in 1 and I just crammed that Nays 32 right on top there. And um, there were a heap of issues that I uh, ran into. So first of all, I didn't mention this is running Betaflight 3.5.2 and I was going to install like the older versions of Betaflight but I was so shocked by the performance of this thing that I really don't even see a point of trying to look for worse performance. I don't even I don't even know what I was thinking to think that worse flight performance might be better for a new pilot. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But whatever it is, this is there's a couple of issues I ran into with this Naze 32. So first of all, it doesn't have um, power management on board. It only takes 5 volt in and there's nothing on my quad that has 5 volt out. Traditionally, ESCs or uh, foreign ones had a 5 volt line out, but this one does not. So I actually pulled the 5 volt off my VTX. The um, This is a, the Amway TX004, uh, and that's my only 5 volt source. This is not a smart thing to do. I have done it in the past, and it is not a smart thing to do because I have my entire quad running off one 5 volt line. I have the VTX, which is taking full 4S in, and it's outputting 5 volts to the flight controller, to my receiver, and to my camera. That's a little bit, it's it's actually not that much power, but it is a lot of stuff to run off one 5 volt source. I just feel like I'm stressing it. Even though it's supposed to be able to supply at least 500 milliamps consistent, I don't trust any of these things. I always try to, you know, under load everything that I have in my quad to try and limit the amount of issues. So the next issue that I ran into is the uh, the input so i didn't realize that this doesn't have an inverter i have forgotten <laughs> i've forgotten all of the difficulties of these old things it doesn't have an inverter and it doesn't take s bus in it sure as well doesn't take crsf it doesn't take s bus in and i'm using an rxsr which only does ppm and s bus out and and i didn't even know how to put that receiver in ppm mode you apparently have to turn it on after it's bound you have to hold the button for four seconds to flip it into PPM mode. And in order to get PPM to work, we go, well, yeah, that's what you gotta do. But then it, I, I tried PPM and I just went out to do a test hover. It was so comically bad that it was unflyable. The delay in the controls were, were just, it, 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 I couldn't even believe that I used to use it. I used to use PPM and then I moved to SBUS and I was like, oh yeah, it is a little bit better. It is not a little bit better. It is day and night better. It's unflyable with PPM. The PWM of each individual signal line being individual is way better than PPM. Okay, so what am I going to do? I can't. Fly. I was going to just fly it on PPM and be like, ah, yeah, whatever, it sucks. I'll just deal with it. But I was like, no, there's got to be a way to get an uninverted SBUS signal out of this receiver. So I just looked at the manual. Apparently, there is. There are two. There's there's a, a solder pad on the receiver that's uninverted SBUS out. And that's awesome. Thank you, FreeSky, FRSky, for putting that on this, this this receiver. Because now I wired that one pad to the signal 4 line on my Naze 32. And then I set UR2 to serial and set it to SBUS and it magically worked. I feel like I have hacked into the past and gotten it to work better. So then, uh, yeah, I wired everything to, together and... Um, yeah, that's about it. I put I put the, the newest beta flight that was available for the Nace 32 on there, and I I am totally floored, totally shocked. So what does this mean moving forward? Well, I've had a lot of developers, not one or two, like five or ten, tell me that there's no point in going to 32K. We don't need more than 1K. There's no need for more than 1K. You don't need to do anything faster. And in reality, I think that KISS is still only running at 1K. And now it makes sense. It's, it's all the code and the firmware and the filtering and all the other stuff. Like, it's not necessary to go faster, maybe. Who knows? But arguably, more information is more information, and it could be better. I don't know. I don't really know what to think. This has really shattered all my, all my thoughts. I mean, we, we all like to think, oh, yeah, 4K, 8K, 32K, 16K. These are all better things. But in reality, it's, it may or may not be. I don't know. It, maybe it depends on the code and the filtering and all the other things about it. But this quad is running on 1.33K, and I didn't test it on like 1K or 500, but I'm pretty sure it would be fine on 1K as well. 
and yeah, that's, that's all I've got to share for you. I hope this was interesting. Um, one other thing I want to say is that there is no OSD on this flight controller, obviously. And when I first plugged it in, my first th- I've, I'm so used to OSD now. I, I mean, I come from nothingness in the past. I come from a KK2 board, before the KK2 even, where OSD was like, you had to solder in like two different boards or an extra board and just like hack the board and pray that it worked. Now I'm just used to OSDs. But this board didn't have an OSD. When I first plugged it in, I was like, oh, crap, the OSD's not working. I must have to change it from NTSC to PAL to get the OSD to work. But then I realized, oh, it's an Ace32. It doesn't have an OSD. I don't even know how long I'm supposed to fly for. I'll just fly around until I feel some sag in the battery and it falls out of the sky or something. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's 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 all I have to say. I, I'm, I'm really shocked. Really, really shocked. I hope this was interesting for you. Um, don't forget to floss. Take care.